going to be Dr. Frank Lewis of the Pompano Beach, Florida class. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's just a blessing to be in this school and to be taught the things that we've been taught since we've been in this school by way of this great, stupendous panoramic vision revelation. And we want to emphasize it's a school and not a church. And this school came by way of the founder, Dr. Henry Cooper Kinley, when he was caught up and received a stupendous panoramic divine vision revelation from Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. And it was the Holy Spirit through him that taught the things that we teach in this school and a Holy Spirit given to others that has been passed down, down to our time. And um, all credit and honor and glory go unto the Holy Spirit because we never knew any of these things and the whole thing is a mystery. You understand, it's a missed story. Even those things written in Daniel, uh, people think that that's going to be way down somewhere, sometime. But in this school, um, you find out that this is really Yahweh's teaching. And so that's why um, we're able to learn the things that we've learned and because he's the one that's taught them. And it's just a blessing to be in this school and it's really the Holy Spirit's a teacher. It's in the Bible that in John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, and the Father will send in my name, he'll teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. And the Holy Spirit, and that was what he told his disciples. But that thing has repeated in this age, because after his death, burial, resurrection, he ascended and did pour out the gift of the Holy Spirit. And uh, um, I, after last night when we were working with this chart, there's a couple things that I would like to at least try to clear up somewhat, or try to finish this out a little bit. Um, we got here with, you had Peg, and David went, in the, the last class, we went through these things, and you got, um, in the 13th chapter, talks of beasts rising up out of the sea, and we showed that that was the Roman Catholic Church, and when you see this man laying down, this was at the feet, and you've got right here where you've got Papal Rome, you've got Italy, and Italy has the shape of a, of a foot, showing forth how close we are down at the end of the world. Then in the 13th chapter of Revelation, you talk about false prophets and say so saw, uh, uh, read that in it's, uh, uh, Revelation 13 and 11, please. Revelation 13 and 11. Mm -hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Another beast coming out of the earth. Not what it's talking about. We know this ain't no physical beast coming out of no physical ground. You understand? What it is, just like in Daniel, when these beasts in the seventh chapter, it says they rose up out of the sea. It's out of the sea of men. The satanic spirit is, is a sin, is a, uh, he's, rolled, he's exalted himself, and he's in a man trying to rule, and you understand, and, and uh, rule the world. You understand? And these, and these did it by uh, 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 swords and spears and physical warfare. Now, when Yahshua Messiah died, buried, resurrected, he changed clothes. He didn't, the same one that was nailed on the cross, that ain't what resurrected. He resurrected a spiritual body. So where he changed clothes, that's how the devil changed clothes ruling the world. He changed clothes by putting a robe on and a Bible under his arm and just deceiving the world with him. You understand? See, so where this beast, and said, told you that the dragon gave power to this beast in the 13th chapter. Get 13 and 6 just for a second. Revelation 13 and 6. Now, were you reading Daniel, the 11th chapter, it was talking about one that was going to be deceiving. And in the 7th chapter of Daniel, 7.25, just read those for a second. 7.25 and 11.36, I think, is what, what the scripture lesson was on. Daniel 7.25. And Daniel means El is our judge. And see, we're being judged on the things that we received down the school See, Read. And he shall speak great words against the most high. Now he shall speak great words against the Most High. See, changing the Creator's name and blaspheming His name and preaching it all over the world, that's what's happened. They changed, 
He shall change. Read. Read again. And he shall speak great words. He shall speak great words against the most against high. Against the most high. Say Yahshua ain't fulfilled. You understand? See? Uh, uh, his name is Jesus and so on. Read. And shall wear out the sons of the most high. And see, that's what the satanic spirit does. He wears out the sons of the most high. You understand? That's his job. And that's what this refuge, that's what this class is for. You understand? So that so we can escape that being worn out. Read. And think to change times and laws. Think to change times and laws. You and understand? It, See, just as the Sabbath day was on a Saturday and then Sunday, but other things too. The times, the, April's the first month of the year, now you think it's January. You're going to say Happy New Year soon. You understand? He changed that at Pope of Rome. That much power. Read. And they shall be given unto it, into his hand until a time, until a time and time, and the dividing of time. Okay, it talks about a time, a time, and the dividing of time. It shall be given in his hand. Now, well, that, that opened up a lot right there. Um, we'll pick that up later if Yahweh permits. Uh, okay. And 11 chapter said about the same things, okay? Now, uh, 1311. Read that. 1311. Mm -hmm. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he had two horns like a lamb. He had two horns like as a lamb. Read. And he spake as a dragon. He spake as a dragon. Now, why he's got two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon? Well, there's a couple things here. It talks about two horns like as a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. Because what happened was, and that's what happens most of the time, the people that teach us, I mean, the people, the, the, uh, the ministers and so on, they wear wool suits. You understand? Finest of suits. That's like a lamb, right? Yeah. But now he speak as a dragon, and what he what what he's dragging, he's dragged Yahshua fulfilled these carnal ordinances. You understand? In other words, there was an old covenant that had baptism, circumcision, uh, uh, sacrifices, ten commands, Passover ceremonies, carnal ordinances. See, and Yahshua fulfilled those things and nailed them on the cross, and it said, "It is finished." See, he died, buried, resurrected, sinned, and brought the Holy Spirit. Well, where Yahshua fulfilled those things, the devil took them things off the cross that Yahshua nailed and drove them across here. That's how he's as a lamb, because it looks like he ain't going to hurt nobody because he's using the Bible. You understand? <laughs> See, he doesn't like a, two horns like as a lamb, but he spake as a dragon, because he's dragging these carnal ordinances over and imposing them on us, and we were just deceived by it. You understand? Read. 12. Mm -hmm. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. See, see, in other words, you have what's called the uh, uh, Protestant churches and so on. See, didn't they come out of the Roman Catholic Church? Yep. And they exercise the same power. They're deceiving mankind just the same way. And what it's really showing is how that the devil changes clothes. You know, when you got Roman Catholicism, then you got Methodist. It's really the same devil, but different clothes. You understand? And, and it ain't just Christianity only either. You understand? If you're just preaching erroneous doctrine to anyone and perpetrating a lie on somebody's heart and mind, it says in Proverbs 18:21, "Death and life are in the power of the tongue." So anything that you're preaching that's erroneous doctrine under one, that's what's going to damn somebody's soul. And that's what every once we come in here, we were deceived. You understand? See. And we needed help. You understand? And it was really by the preaching of the gospel. See, and you read in Revelation, I think it's the 18th chapter, where it says that come out of Babylon and be not a partaker of a place. Well, I want the 17th chapter, too, of this beast. There was a scholar-colored beast. And if you don't have a 1950 something dictionary, you won't see that the scholar-colored beast will say Revelation, the 17th chapter. If they changed it, if it's 1916 onward, you usually don't see scholar-colored beast. They'll say Revelation, 17th chapter. That's what it's talking about. Or scholar woman. Scarlet woman, that's what. They took they got so much power they took it out of the dictionary. You understand? It talks about it talks about a whore that sit upon many waters. Now ain't no physical whore in Revelation 17 chapter. It's talking about it's talking about really these religious organizations that we walked in. A whore doesn't she dress up, look good, and men go in to pay her money to have a relationship with her? Well, the spiritual whore is the buildings we first went into to try to worship the Creator. We went into there and paid money to have a relationship with her. And what you're whoring around is erroneous doctrine. See, it's something spiritual. It's not physical. You understand? See, and you read uh, that talk about mystery Babylon was upon her head. And see, Dr. Kinley has this stone. Well, the stone in Daniel was, was at the feet because it was at Rome and that image was busted. But why the stone is at the head? Because it's representing... 
It's representing how that back there with the, when, when the serpent come out of the garden, he says that the woman's seed would bruise your head and that he would bruise his heel. And that's why I got the serpent when Yahshua was crucified. It got him bruising Yahshua's heel, but Yahshua was bruising his head. And that's what happened when we came into class. See, when you got this, and the founder on the, El, on the Daniel chart, he said that Peter was in Babylon attacking the image in the head. And John was in the middle here attacking him right here. And Paul went to Rome. Now, how you, you're attacked, see, you just don't look at the Pope of Rome. You look at the Pope at home and examine yourself and see if you're setting up a kingdom on earth. Because they're definitely setting up their kingdoms by building these big churches. They're the biggest buildings in the world with, with laws of banks. You understand? See? But anyway, that's an economic Babylon. And that's religious Babylon, the churches, and they're very rich, you understand, and so on. But I'm not going to go into that because i got a lot of other things to do. But what I wanted to show was this. Well, there's a couple things that I missed last night. That's why we're going over this. In the 13th chapter, it says that they might not buy or sell, said he had the mark of the beast. Well, see, what people don't realize is, well, first of all, it said the mark in his right hand is forehead. Now, we know that on Ash Wednesday, they'll put it, it's easy to see that mark on the forehead with the right hand. And also, he'll go with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Now, that's easy to see that. But see, what it is, it's erroneous doctrine preached to you. And he said, and the same one has the mark of the beast. He says, you must give God your money. Well, in your forehead, you're believing it. And with your right hand, you're doing it. So that you're being marked in your forehead and your hand because we know Yahshua fulfilled those things. And those are under the Old Covenant. And you're, you're crucifying the Messiah afresh and bringing them to an open. Open shape. Then also they'll say, well, you got to eat the, he said, Jesus said, eat the Lord's Supper. So in your forehead, you go, yeah, I should. And in your right hand, you're doing it. So that's yeah. a mark in the forehead and in the hand. Yeah. But now that's going outside. But when you come into class, what it is, is somebody preaching erroneous doctrine in your forehead, you go, yeah. And in your right hand, you start teaching it. And you're being marked because if you go to Romans 4, 16, 17, it says how we mark and how we mark you is because it says to the law and the testimony. And they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. So if you're not going to the law and the testimony, you're not proving by the fulfillment, you're not showing after his death, burial, resurrection, what the Holy Spirit taught there, it ain't gonna change none. You understand? It ain't gonna change. Because it's the same Holy Spirit. As Dr. Kinley said, where they on this side of on this side of the cross, where they partook of carnal ordinances, you're partaking of the Holy Spirit down here. You understand? See, by, and, how, and it's the Holy Spirit that pinned the laws, it's the Holy Spirit that pinned the testimonies, it's the Holy Spirit that spoke, the Holy Spirit was signified, speaking through Yahshua, you understand, the fulfillment, and the spirit fulfillment, all the way to Revelation, same Holy Spirit, that's what you're partaking of, see. And other things, the Holy Spirit can reveal things besides that, you understand? See, now, read that, please. Mark 16, I mean, Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17. Mm -hmm. Now, I beseech you. I Lord. beseech you. Mark them which cause divisions. Mark division them that cause divisions and offenses, and offenses contrary, contrary to, the doctrine to the doctrine which you have which learned. You have learned. Doctrine is a body of principles. It was already set up to about the founder. And Yahweh allowed him to take off the flesh just to see what the people would do with it. Mm. And see if the satanic spirit would infiltrate. And he always does. He just keeps overturning and trying to change things. But Yahweh said, I, Yahweh, I change not. Do you understand? See, that thing just don't change because he just overturns and overturns and repeats, and we have a pattern in operation. Now, all I want to say is we came into class, we were deceived. And what happened to it is, just as they attack the image in the head, the bottom, how they attack the image is the same way we, we come down to class. He knocks the heck out of you with a one, two, three punch. In other words, he uses by death, burial, resurrection. You understand? Blood of our spirit for you. You understand? That's a four punch, ain't it? The law of Christ will kill me. Yahweh, I'm not sure. You understand? To law and the test, you understand? We just got, you understand? Hopefully that stuff was knocked out of us. You know, cast out. That's what it's talking about. See? And that's what, that's that, and that hopefully, and then Yahshua Messiah resurrects in you. That's your only hope of glory. And that's what it's all about. And that's what it says here. That the apostles were setting up the kingdom of heaven and tearing down the kings of the devil. And why somebody says the king may come, it's Matthew 12, 28. It says, if I, don't, if, I, if I cast out demons by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom will come unto you. And see, to pray that prayer, our Father is already in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that you can't pray that prayer here. Right. Because he died, buried, resurrected, and sent him for the Holy Spirit. In Romans 14, 17, the, the, it says, the, the kingdom of Yahshua, Yahweh, is not meats and drinks, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So this age is a whole completely different age. You understand? 
See, and then that's why since Colossians 1.13, as the founders say, you say the kingdom ain't come yet, and he says, he says he has translated into the kingdom, so it must already come. Right. And on top of that, the kingdom always has been, because up here on this chart, it has Matthew 25, 34, and it says, it says we separate the sheep from the goats and put the sheep on the right hand, it says, come ye blessed, and inherit the kingdom, which was prepared before the foundation of the world. And that's what the founders said, that's where the angels are, fella. You understand? See, and that's where we hopefully are. You understand? You understand? He declares the end from the beginning. See, and that's what it come out of. It come out of Yahweh Elohim, the kingdom of Elohim, and he ain't by himself here. He has a righteous host. You understand? See, and then you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it starts back to eight to the same place it left in the kingdom. You understand? See? All right, just want to throw that out. Okay. Daniel, uh, so it's really about you. It ain't about somebody else. You have to examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. It's always easy to look at the other fellow. You understand? But that's what it says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. No, you're not the ostracized in you except when you reprobate. See, he said, I hope you ain't reprobate. That means you're lost and damned. And see, if you don't receive the truth, the gift of the Holy Spirit, you will. You do have a punishment. You understand? If that's not Yahshua in you. So that's why it's no play thing. You're messing around with that. All right. Give me uh, the, the first thing that was given in the scripture lesson, please. I don't have no overhead business. Sorry. I don't know if it... Anyway. Read, please. Daniel 8, 13. If you saw the holy name, they done screwed this all the way up. But anyway, read. Then I heard one son speaking to another Now, see, if you're going to do prophetic time, you have to know some things. In this school... We, we, boy, so much. But anyway, prophetic time, you have to know Psalms 90 and 4. It says, one day of Yahweh is a thousand years and a thousand years. Well, no, it says, a thousand years is yesterday in Yahweh's eyesight. Now, this is prophetic time we're talking about. You're talking about prophecy, you're going to have to use prophetic time. So one day equals a thousand years. It says again, and then when 2 Peter 3 and 8 says, beloved, they're talking about beloved with about from the Messiah, the Holy Spirit's in them. You understand? Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. The one day of Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is equal to one day. Right. Now, you are, that's 2 Peter 3 and 8 in Psalms 94. You also have Numbers 14, 34, and you have um, Ezekiel 4 and 6 is prophetic time, that he said one day is equivalent to one year. Right. See, uh, as the founders said, it was a 40-day journey. They could have got there in 40 days. But since of their disobedience, they had to wait 40 years. You understand? A day for a year. And that's what it says here in Ezekiel 4 and 6. And Now, when you just read Daniel, read that, please. Then I heard one son speaking, oh. and another son said unto that certain son which spake, Good. How long shall the vision concerning the daily See, sacrifice? it's a vision, so it takes a vision revelation to understand it. Read. And the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Trodden underfoot, read. And he said unto me, <clears throat> Unto 2,300 2, days. 300 days. Now, see, if you use the holy name, see, they're calling them out and they're going to say 2,200 evenings and mornings. But this 2,300 days is really just three days. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the founder has it on the chart. So that's why you see we ain't making up nothing. Everywhere you see him die, die at, you're going to have 1,000 on Friday. Mm -hmm. Then he's buried, that's 2,000. Because then you die on a Friday, buried on a Saturday, resurrects the 300 part of the day. So that's what that 2,300 days is talking about. But now it's such a mystery because see what the seven-day Adventists do. They take the 2,300 days, see, and took 457 and subtracted it, and they got 1843. That founder would always put that in there. And that was William Miller did that and said that's when he's going to come back and so on. And when it didn't happen, then he says, no, that's just when he entered into the most holy place. You understand? And it, it, as the founder said, it said his first error, his second error is worse than the first. You understand? Just like what happened with Joshua. All right? But then, and so they used those 2,300 days as years. You understand? In this thing. And so, so and then it, it was a false prophecy. Okay? And that's why you, the Holy Spirit has to lead and guide you and show you those things. You understand? So what you find out is, see, when he dies on a Friday, that's one day. You can equal that to a thousand years. 
You understand? Mm -hmm. Then when he's buried, that's another day. So that's going to be two. That, well, that's another thousand. So it's representing his, I don't know why I'm going backwards, but I usually go upwards, you know, but anyway. And resurrects, we, we show the 300 part of the day. And that's how you get 2,300. Now that would be years, wouldn't it? If we use this, that one day is equal to 1,000 years. <laughs> then we can use this one, that's right. that one day is equal to years, so we can change that and get 2,300 days. So you have to use almost both of those uh, uh, prophetic time to show 2,300 days. Right. All right? Now, when we go to the pattern, well, <clears throat> when we go to the pattern, see, if you look on your pamphlets, you, uh, mm -hmm. your program, it has the pattern already written out for you. Right. And if you're going by the pattern, well, I can't, you know, I ain't going to draw it. <laughs> uh, you can refer to that because it's already drawn here. Anyway. So from here, the gate to here is 23 and a third feet. See? From the gate here to the altar is 23 and a third. And from the mm -hmm. altar here, I mean the labor, excuse me. The al 23 and a third here, 23 and a third here, 23 and a third here, you get 70 feet. Now see, you'll say, well, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, there's a couple ways to get 70 here. Didn't 70 go down into Egypt? Adam, the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. See, he did die instantaneously. Then it was reflected 930 years later. So that would be 70 short, ain't it? So that's a, that's a principle. That's a correlation you can use with a court roundabout from 70 in this. You understand? Because we're talking about 70. You understand? So down in Egypt, that's a couple witnesses, okay? All right. Now, also with 23 and a third, or, that's also the tilt of the earth. The earth is tilted 23.3 degrees. And that's what causes the seasons of the year to occur. You understand? Is the degree tilt of the earth in relationship to the sun. Right. And so, so when you see the fall time of the year, that's representing Yahshua's death. It's that 23 degree tilt that does that. So you see how it's going by the pattern? See? And then so it's testifying to his death. See, well, he went, the founder, he would go in the Elohim book and show you that, that the lamb killed Egypt, 1,000. Buried in the cloud of the sea, 2,000. Resurrected 300 part a day, 2,300 day, cleansing a sanctuary or resurrection for the children of Israel. He'd show it with Jonah. Th thrown into the sea, good as dead, 1,000. Buried in the belly of fish, 2,000. Resurrects the 300 part of the day, 2,300 day. See, also what the founder did, See, so, so the seasons of the year, fall time representing his death, burial, winter time, burial, you understand, resurrection, spring time representing his resurrection, and then summer is representing his ascension and outpouring the Holy Spirit. So as you can see, it's going by seasons of the year, and that 2300 days shows that. Now where you have a cleansing of a sanctuary when he resurrects, also when he pours out the Holy Spirit, that's a cleansing of a sanctuary, you understand? And also in the pattern, the high priest making three trips up into the most holy place. The third trip on the Day of Atonement was called for the cleansing of the sanctuary. That's why we usually have three classes, so that your sanctuary can be cleansed. You understand? But really what it's showing forth also is the time that we're in. See, this third age of time, that's where the cleansing of the sanctuary and the gift of the Holy Spirit is going to be given. Also, that's why the earth is three planets from the sun. That third represents resurrection or life, and that's why there's only life existing on this planet. You understand? So this third age, the only life, the life only here is Yahshua Messiah in you. That's your only life. And everybody's saying that in IDMR, but it means, but if you're preaching the wrongest doctrine, you're just a liar and a hypocrite. And so that's a serious thing to be like that. Now also, we're talking about an impregnation too. Because the founder showed also that that in the first three days of creation, don't you have the earth buried? I mean, it's, in, it's without form, that's a death. It's covered over in water, that's 1,000. Covered over water, that's a 2,000. And then did he resurrect the vegetation on the third day? That's a 2,300 day there. Then he repeats it again with the fourth day. You got the lesser light and so on, you understand? And representing for seasons and times. See, so that's, so that's 1,000, you understand? Because they didn't have to fall out of it. it was night. You understand? But anyway, we're going to do that. Then you find out he animated those. That's a 2,000. And then did he bring forth the man? Mm -hmm. Now, 
When you put 23 and 23 together, you get 46. Now that's how we all came into this world. Is that you have the man seed, you have the man seed, now he's the one that determines you got 23 chromosomes. And he can give the X or the Y. You understand? But the woman, she can only give you the 23 with the X. So when the XY comes together, that's 46, and you have the XY, and that's what makes a man child. And so you see how the Y, it's through Yahshua that you're going to have an impregnation or a true birth take place. You understand? He's, he is going to impregnate your heart and mind. So you have a problem with virgin birth now. But what happens is, well, he impregnated the whole world with everything that exists, and that's doing some impregnating. Yeah. A woman's no problem what he did with virgin mother earth. You understand? So that's the same thing with us. Should be no problem. He keeps all those planets in the right orbit and everything else. Should be no problem keeping our little butts in line. You understand? If you say that's the Holy Spirit in you. You understand? He should be here lead, leading and guiding. You understand? See, so we're, so we're, and that's why, I think it was, what is it, John 2.19, that he said, tear this temple down, and in three days I'll raise it up. And they said, well, 46 years this has been Now, why was that 46 years? Because don't you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Which you have of Yahweh, not your own. Therefore, glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit. And since you were bought with a price, why? The precious blood of the size. We can't make that of none effect and say, you know, that he was doing that to save his own self. You understand? No, he did that to save us. You understand? We need a Savior, and there's power in it. You understand? See? And it's by the power of the preaching of the gospel. Now, also another thing, see? <laughs> you got the Law and the Prophets are 39 books. When you go to fulfillment, you get four more books, that's 43. There's 66, there's 66 books in the Bible. So right. the last 23 from Acts to Revelation, you understand? 23 books. It's talking about the, what happened after the day of Pentecost. And it's also prophesying what's going to happen. So 23 is over here with the Bible. 23 books. That's the cleansing of the sanctuary. It's the spirit fulfillment. And when we talk about spirit fulfillment, we're talking about filling you full of the spirit. Do you understand? See? And you ain't going to say nothing different than what's already in there the Holy Spirit done wrote. You can't say nothing different. And also, Acts, the second chapter, is where the Holy Spirit was poured out. And this is the third age. 23. You understand? Just like 23 books. Now, also, that 43 books, the Law of Prize Fulfillment, that 43 is a deliverance, too. Because don't we preach blood, water, spirit, 40? So, blood, water, spirit, four step. Death, burial, resurrection, three feet. So, you have a 43 here. So how the law of the prophets of fulfillment, 43, will give you a deliverance just like it was 430 years from the promise. They're delivered by death, burial, resurrection. You understand? See? So we're just showing you. And when Yahshua comes in, see, doesn't he come in the fourth dispensation? Mm -hmm. Really, the whole law of prophecy of fulfillment was written right here. In the fourth dispensation, the third age. So you see how it's important to go law of prophecy of fulfillment? Because that's 43, or deliverance. Then when he pours out the Holy Spirit, he pours it out in the fourth age, and this is the third age of time. So that's a principle of 43, giving you the gift of the Holy Spirit in this age. Okay? I think that's good enough for 2300. Because <clears throat> I know there's another speaker. You understand? Plus, there's so many people out here that I've learned from that uh, the Holy Spirit through them that I, I don't feel... Well, I ain't going to go in. Well, whatever. Uh, this is a great teaching. And it ain't talking about them anyway. And they ain't talking about me. There ain't no salvation. You understand? I ain't nobody's savior. But anyway, go, that's for sure. Okay, go to, go to 12 and 7 of Daniel. Yahshua is. And his name's Salvation. You understand? See, what he did, that was, there was something to that. And see, that's why I'm coming to class dead. We're buried in erroneous doctrine and hopefully cast that thing out by the preaching of the truth. You understand? And then Yahshua's out resurrecting you. And if he resurrects in you, what's going to happen? This is a resurrection age. And he's going to sin with the spirit and body to live throughout immortality with glorification. That's a death, burial, resurrection, ascension on that. They're going down the dispensation age. And that's what it's all about. That we were dead and buried in some kind of foolishness. And by the preaching of the gospel, said those things were cast out and the Holy Spirit resurrected. Okay, get Daniel 12 and 7. 
Daniel 12, 12 and 7. And I heard the man clothed in, this, in linen, okay, which was upon the waters of the river. And so really that 2300 day is really just talking about Yahshua. See, remember it says to the law and the testimony. He said the scriptures there, they testified me. So really the 2300 is really just talking about him. He fulfilled it, finished it, nailed it to the cross. And for you to go over here and try to make up something. You messed up. You understand? Now we do have some other correlations to prove things, but the main focus is he took care of it. So there ain't no prophecy coming way down. You understand? And that's where we were all missed out. That's where there's vision, where there's no prophetic vision and people perish. Read. And I heard the man clothed in linen. Clothed in linen. See, that's Joshua in the flesh, because the linen represents flesh. Mm -hmm. He's the man clothed in linen. Read. Which was upon the waters of the river. See, he's he's on right around the River Jordan where he was dealing with. Read. When he held up his right hand, right hand, and his left hand unto heaven, he'd be nailed to the cross, and swear by him that liveth forever, swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for a time, a time. time. Now he also did that as Joshua when he was over here on a phenomenal day. See, it was a phenomenal day when they resurrected the divine waters of the Red Sea. Because there was a day and a night right within that night when they resurrected because the cloud was light for them and darkness for the other ones. So now over here in the prophets, he's saying, Thou uh, moon stand still in the valley of Gibeon and sun in the valley of Agilon, one of them. One of them. Mm -hmm. He's pointing out to both of them. You understand? Testifying to what he's going to come and do right. for salvation. But anyway, I want to go. I'm just going to finish this up because I know. I always well, let's go please. And swear so by him a time. A time times. Okay, now, this is another prophetic thing. See this altar here. <clears throat> See, this altar here, as, a, as was said last night, it was not seven and a half feet long, which is 90 inches. Mm -hmm. They killed the sacrifice on the north side. Mm -hmm. And ended up north where you see the death. Isn't that where fall time really represents? So the, the, the days do, he killed on the north side, and then the north, it always fall every year, leaves fall off the tree. Mm -hmm. then, he, then, then it's buried, and so it's just showing forth the 30, the 90 here is showing forth three months of, 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 of fall. Then the next 90 is three months of winter. Next 90 is three months of, uh, of, su of spring, then three months of summer. That's 360 days. Now that's prophetic time that one day is equal to 360. Now that's Yahweh's time. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a time is 360. Read. Times. Times. Now times. A time is one year. So that's 360. See? Times means two years. So we can do 360 and 360. We can say it twice because times is plural. That means two years. Okay? Read. And a half. And a half time. Or a half. That means half of 360. Mm -hmm. Which is 180. Add that up, you get 1260. Mm -hmm. That's equal to 42 months. That's equal to three and a half years. Okay? Now, <clears throat> Noah, we all, I'm just going to more or less in the, in the law, just going to use this at the end of the age here. Because it's talking about the end of the age with Yahshua. You understand? We can prove about a pattern. That's enough witnesses to show it. Now, Noah was 120. <laughs> Noah came 126 years. He was born 126 years after Adam. That's a 126, which is like 1260. He preached 120 years. That's 12. And he, at the 600 year of his life, 12 and 600, you can, zeros are placeholders, right? You get 1260, and we have a principle here with the, his ministry. Now, that's a 1260 on this side. Then when he came over on, because in the Daniel we also read about in the midst of a week. Well, you got, well, 1260. <laughs> see, that's where it, see this pattern. If you look on your program again, to, from the gate to the most holy place is 1260. See, well, you know three and a half years is half. So you have a 1260 on one side. See, and then how, how long did Noah live? 350 years in that three and a half mm -hmm. centuries. Mm -hmm. So he lived three and a half, and he, he was given a covenant it wasn't going to rain. Then you go in the prophets, Elijah's given a covenant, three, he, he prays three and a half years, it don't rain. Then when Yahshua sighs in his three and a half ministry, it don't rain. He don't pour out the Holy Spirit until after he's through with his ministry. <laughs> you understand? So you see how he's fulfilling the law, mm -hmm. the prophets of fulfillment, and everything's testifying of him. You understand? 
And so, when, so in the pattern, the high priest going one up, going up to the most holy place, that's 1,260 inches because he went 105 feet. And that's on your program. Okay? If he comes down, him going both of those, mm -hmm. going up and down, mm -hmm. that's going to give you 2520. That's the same as 7 times 360. Mm -hmm. You understand? And that's when Moses had the vision up here was the 12 was 2513 and had the six days and the seven day rest, that gives you 2520. Mm -hmm. Down here in Egypt, that's the pyramid, had a mystic number, 2520. And 2520 is one of the few numbers that you can divide every number, one through nine, and not get a remainder. There's not many numbers will do that. That's why it's a number known only unto Yahweh. All right? Okay. All right, so we did, so now when Yahshua comes in, we know he was, he was 42 generations from, from Abraham. See, Abraham was given a promise. Then they were given a law in between that said, don't disannul the promise. You understand? See, and so Yahshua comes in. He's 42 generations from Abraham. He also was 42 months of ministry, three and a half years, so that's the 1260 when it talks about the time, the time and a half, okay? It's, it's showing forth him fulfilling that. And so it's all pointing out the three and a half years he was in his ministry. Okay? Read the next one. Keep reading. Come down. And when he... Oh. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Keep going. And I heard... All these things shall be finished. Why does he say finished? Because fulfilled means what? Finished, complete, bring in. So when he's on the cross after his three and a half year ministry, it is finished. You understand? As far as worshiping Yahweh naturally, it ain't finished because this age still going on. And Dr. Kelly say one, he say, he said one thing Joshua didn't fulfill. The purpose is still going on, eh? Mm. <laughs> Read. <clears throat> and I heard, but I understood not. I understood not. Read. Then said I. But he is fulfilling the purpose. But you know, as far as time is still going on, you understand? But Yahweh already ended it already from the beginning. It's, he's in his long suffering. That's why. Okay, just go on. Oh, Yahweh, what shall be the end of these things? What shall be the end of these things? Read. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel. Go thy way, Daniel. For the words are closed up and sealed until the time of the end. Time of the end. So it's talking about end again. Read. Mm -hmm. Many shall be purified. And the end with Joshua. I think we got that. We usually have that on right there. That's it. See? The end. Time of the end. Read. And try. Mm -hmm. But the wicked shall do wickedly. Mm -hmm. And none of the wicked shall understand. But the wise shall understand. See, they, they, they didn't understand what happened back here. You understand? That's why I said, that's why I said, her back, we talked about the other night. I work work in your way, they work with you. No wise believe, though, a man declared. They still don't believe. You understand? And big people in this group don't believe because they think they're fulfilling something down here. Oh, look what I'm doing. You understand? Mm -hmm. I thought he fulfilled it. Read. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So that's just <coughs> added on to this. That's right. That's twelve hundred and ninety days. That's Joshua's full time when he walked around the earth lane. Three and a half years plus his thirty minute, thirty thirty years when he was baptized by John the Baptist and go into his ministry. He went three and a half years after. That's twelve ninety. Okay? You're getting back here. Uh, see, well, we showed you that he preached 120. 600 years of life, that's a 1260. The ark was 30 cubits high. You understand? So you could add the 30 to that and get 1290 in here. All right? Here, there's a couple 1290s. The first time the high priest was anointed was at the age of 30, and he goes in 1260 and plus 30 would be uh, 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 1290. Or you can go, he goes in right here, and since he's five feet within the veil, the mercy seat would be exactly two and a half feet more, which is 30 more inches. So that's 1290 sitting right up on the throne. You understand? And then we know it's all talking about the true king, Joshua, how he's fulfilling these things and bringing those things in. And that's a 1290 with him. So I'm just running with him, okay? All right, read on. Blessed is he that waiteth. Blessed, blessed is he that waiteth. And coming to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. The fat one thousand three hundred and thirty-five days. See? Now, that's forty-five added on. Okay? And that will give you thirteen 
uh, 35, it says, Blessed is he that waited to this at that time. You understand? Okay. So, you have a 1290 here. I guess I could have used the length of it was 300, so I could have added that for a 30. And then 45, well, there's a couple things. From 1260 to 1335, you get 75. That would give you 1335. The ark was 75 feet wide, same as the tabernacle. You understand? So you could add 12, 60, 75, get 13, 35. But blessed is he that waited to the end. They were in the ark, and they came on over into this age with that ark. So you can use the dimensions of the ark. So for 1290, the ark was 45 feet tall. So 1290 plus 45 will be 1335, and they're coming on over, being blessed by coming over to the next age. In the most holy place, we have 1290 here. The ark was 45 inches long. So... 1290 plus 45, 1335. Blessed is he that cometh there. Did he, isn't that where the Shekinah was? And that was a blessing showing forth he forgiven their sins. It's also representing the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at 1335. And then when you come over here with Yahshua, 1290, when he has sinned, blessed is he that wait to 1335. Well, 1290 is here. He pours out the Holy Spirit in the fourth age, fifth dispensation. 45. 1335, blessed he that waited, he pours out the Holy Spirit. You understand? See? Yeah, 1335, and that's the true blessing. See? <clears throat> now, just real quick, <laughs> if you all wait for me, what's I supposed to do? The 490s, that's another thing. You can't do that. No way. Okay. <laughs> that's just 457 plus 33 is a 490. I ain't going that. <laughs> but now 120, he preached at 120 at the end of the age. Yahshua fulfilled, he would, Yahoshua was 30 here, 40 here, and 70, uh, 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 40 here, 110, and then, and then 10, year, 10 years after was the first jubilee at 120. Yahshua fulfilled it by being 30 going in John the Baptist, 40 carrying on an airplane, I mean 40 being tested. He had, that's why I day for a year, because he's going to be 120. How's he going to fulfill it unless it's day for a year? <laughs> then died, buried, resurrected, carries on airplane 40 days. That's 110. And then 10 days later, pours out the Spirit. It ends at 120, pours it out on 120. And year 6,000 is the 120 of Jubilee. No. I, I wouldn't look for another one. <laughs> the ark is 75 feet wide. You understand? Yahshua fulfills it. This is 75 feet wide. It was the same dimension. Matter of fact, the, the ark was nine tabernacles. It was three tabernacles long and three stacked up on each other. Same dimensions. Show, you understand? Showing it's going by the pattern. Okay? This is 75 wide. I ain't going to go, you know, you got seven branch lamps standing in the holy place, fifth step, that's 75, so on. But, but the thing Joshua fulfilling it, he was 42 generations from Abraham mm -hmm. and then 33 in the flesh. 42 and 33, 75, bringing it to an end. That's the end of the age here. And what we're looking for is to receive a spirit embodiment at the seventh dispensation, fifth age, 75, bring it to an end. You understand? And then the 45, remember the ark is 450 feet long, 45 uh, tall. See, didn't, didn't, didn't over here, this stay for the, uh, the uh, when, when he pours out the, when, when the high priest was anointed, it's the fourth step. And there were five ingredients with the Holy Cup anointing, 45 in the inner end there. You understand? And then the most holy place is 45 inches long. See? See? Now, over here there was 400. The, Caleb said 40 in five years if I waited. Why did he do that? Because it's by the pattern of the 45-inch arc there. And wasn't there 450 uh, years that stayed here? See? So Yahshua fulfills it. He's in the fourth dispensation. And after his death, burial, resurrection, he had to wait 50 days later. 450, that was the end there. You understand? And he pours the Holy Spirit, as we already said, in the fourth, the fourth age, the fifth dispensation. And it's the Holy Spirit, and Dr. Kimmy preached 45 years at the end. You understand? At 75, when he turned over the Institute, so I forgot to do that. 75, he turns over the Institute and says, I'm Dean of the Universe. He just Dean of the Physical School. There's a difference. Dean of the Universe, that's, you understand? That's the Holy Spirit ruling. You understand? And so at 75, he did that. But see, but 45, we have to have the true Holy Spirit here in the fourth age so that we can receive the immortal glorified body in the fifth age. That's 45 going into the holy place of the kingdom age with the immortal glorified body.
Um, all praise going to Yahweh well until some y'all shall have it. speaker tonight is a guest speaker. He's the former dean of downtown Chicago Branch School, and he is now the editor of Plym Publications, Dr. Lee Warren. just uh, continue with the uh, discourse. Now, the uh, last speaker uh, pointed out, uh, let's do this one, uh, the importance of uh, establishment that the uh, founder had uh, this vision in 1931. Uh, and what it did was reveal some of the mysteries that had been uh, laid down within the uh, scriptures. Now, the uh, first we went through the uh, Daniel uh, prophecies, uh, and those things that show forth the uh, divine authenticity. Now, let me say this, is that uh, there were many people uh, that had uh, uh, wrote, uh, you know, concerning uh, these uh, prophetic calculations. And what I mean would be uh, one of the great classical books that was written in 1914 was Clarence Larkin, Dispensational Truth. Now, there was many things that was incomplete in that book. You know, Yahweh is something else. A lot of times people have umptions or whatever. Uh, things are incomplete, things are incorrect, and then all of a sudden Yahweh will give somebody to just correct the whole thing and put the whole thing in uh, perspective. So. That's what you had here, because you had a lot of, like I said, a lot of confusion in Christianism concerning those uh, 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 prophetic calculations, especially, uh, as the last speaker pointed out, that uh, as the uh, uh, Yahshua Messiah came in, when he came in, uh, he said that, uh, he told the uh, Hebrews, now we have to uh, uh, pause for a moment then, because when you, you do your research, you know, here these are two search schools and they're not limited there, or, you know, here, you know, let me say this way. You know, uh, my wife is the assistant dean at Northwestern, and uh, so they would go down to some of the black schools down south, you know, Spelman, et cetera, and uh, we have friends at the MIT that go down there, and those black schools, they had limited funds and et cetera, so they would show their laboratories to, uh, you know, laboratories and stuff to, uh, uh, these people that come from MIT, that stuff is like high school, because you're talking about the cream of the cream, See, now what I'm saying that is this. Now, having a vision and a revelation and a pattern, then that makes you, you should be cream of the cream in the spirit realm. Now, by that, let me say this. Let's do it this way. Why don't you give me the 10th chapter? No, we'll do the first chapter of Daniel. Now, when Daniel was in uh, Babylon, uh, now uh, you had, uh, uh, I'll set this up, you had many uh, 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 scholars. You had the MIT, your Harvard. In other words, those people weren't no slow. And when nobody smoking reefers and selling dope. See, so the thing was highly, it was a highly advanced civilization. In fact, uh, one of the big questions in archaeological findings today is how did the Assyrians and Ethiopians, you know, when you talk about the, uh, uh, the foundation of civilization, you have to go to Iraq, where we're going at now. And they don't know how those folks were able to go from a nomadic civilization to urban, or urban civilization with, with the, uh, the walls of uh, Babylon. This, this fantastic geometry. All that, they just can't figure out how it's done. How do you go from a, a nomadic tribe to a highly advanced civilization? That's a great mystery. Now, those people were highly advanced, very, very technically, because modern astronomy, modern astrology, and astronomy, you know, that's a difference, uh, is based on some of these calculations that were laid down uh, in Babylon. See, 
So then, now, they happened to capture, or they were given power by Yahweh to capture the Israelites for their disobedience. Now, the Israelites were supposed to be a light to the Gentiles, uh, as you have it in, I think, the 44th or 50th uh, of Isaiah. Now, being a light or illumination, just like America was supposed to be a light under the world, uh, but uh, we became corrupted as a result of these multinational corporations, these very wealthy families. They have totally corrupted the whole thing, so they go in and really uh, devastate these third world nations, you know, rob them of their resources and everything. Mm -hmm. So you have the same thing that took place back here in Babylon, see? And that's why uh, the scripture says, how thou fallen, how thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, thou hast weakened the nations. Mm -hmm. Now that both has a natural manifestation, and it has what? Spiritual. Spiritually. You've got to have the counterpart. And you can't separate the two, because people say, well, you know, that's spiritual. No, you, know, you misunderstand. It's just like, how do you know whether you've got pneumonia? How do you know whether you got uh, AIDS? How do you know whether you got uh, 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 leukemia? The first thing they want to do is, is look for the symptoms. And symptoms, if you look at the etymology of the word, is signs. So all, every disease got its signs. And then they start doing blood tests to verify to come up with the correct diagnosis. So then I'm saying to you, the, the, uh, the weakening of these nations, meaning not only these nations up here, but when you look at the third world, that ain't by accident. Somebody is ripping them folks off. Say, and taking advantage of them and not uh, exalting uh, and helping uh, those nations uh, elevate themselves. But that, that, that's a natural. Okay, now we're in Daniel. Daniel's in Babylon. So now, Daniel was told uh, as they were taken in, uh, uh, what happened was, is that when they were taken into Babylon, Babylon said this, King says, wait a minute, you, you find me the wise men there. See, people don't understand that. I mean, if you don't understand history, uh, uh, here in America in World War II, if you don't know what the Operation Paperclip is, people mostly say, what's Operation Paperclip? That's how these damn Nazis got here. Well, who brought them in? Now, I ain't talking about the little private people that worked in the concentration camps. They tried to send them both feet back overseas. I'm talking about people like Warden Van Braun. You ever heard of Warden Van Braun? Yeah. He was the guy that built the, uh, the Nazi program. Van Braun was the father of the U2, B2. So they had all these fans. The, the, listen, the Nazis were brilliant people. I lived in Germany a year. Very brilliant people. So what they did, they said, wait a minute. Now, y'all can't kill these folks here. Now, listen. Listen, uh, we're going to make you an offer. You work for us, and you get paid. Now, if you don't, we'll send you to the Nur Nuremberg trials, and we're going to hang you. So, as the mafia said, he offered me a deal, and I couldn't what? <laughs> couldn't refuse. <laughs> So then you begin. So that's how we got most of the Nazis' technology. The biological warfare, where do you think they came, where do you think they came from? The Nazis. <coughs> All the gas broken. Where, where did America get it? They got it from the Nazis. They were brilliant scientists. Okay, well, we, I'm taking that. That's how we got our program, the intelligence program. Where did we get it from? We got it from the Nazis. See? All of that stuff came into this country, and we just did what with it? We took it. And modification, we took it on. We took it on to perfection. Now, and now we look at that. I want you to go back to what happened when Hitler. I mean, when Hitler, like the same principle, when Nebuchadnezzar, he had these Israelite wise men. He said, "Listen, you got them. Okay, put them on a diet of, of fine food. Now, listen, the people that eat no cheap stuff. You get, you get peanuts. You get moose. You get just cream the cream. You know." We ain't talking about no making these stuff. <laughs> See, we're talking about cream to cream. And then uh, uh, you read that in Daniel, then Daniel says, wait a minute, uh, uh, we're not allowed, being the law, the, the dietary laws that you have there in the Leviticus 11 chapter. He says, no, 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 wait a minute, well, well we, we, we can't uh, uh, take that. So the, 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 the head of the people said, wait a minute, put us on pulp. Pulp is meaning, it means what? Vegetable. Vegetables and beans. He said, put us on a, what we call a raw food type diet. The guy said, wait a minute, no, no, I can't be doing that because if you start looking thin and you go before Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's going to have my what? Head bitterly. He said, he wasn't playing. They don't play that. He said, he said, he said okay, Daniel said, well, let's try. Try. So Daniel, so in other words, now that there's a natural manifestation to that and there's also a what? Spiritual. spiritual. In other words, uh, spiritually and psychologically, you can't eat the doctrine. Of, of Babylon, see, unless you make very wise modifications to the food, we're talking about spiritually, 
See? So Daniel, Daniel was told to review. Now he's looking at the natural. He said, no, I can't eat that. I'm going to eat this. So he put them on that diet, and they ate that diet, da da da, da uh, uh, after the extended period of time. So they brought them into the king. Now here's the clincher. Now remember, I told you how brave the natural scientist is. You can go, you, you should, if you can't, you know, if you don't want to read books on Operation Paperclip, uh, just go get you a Google, uh, 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 get on the web, and type in Paperclip. And you'll get a bunch of articles that come out that will tell you the history of, uh, uh, of how the Nazi scientists came into uh, the new world and perfected uh, uh, our technology. You know, the, uh, you know the, the, the V2 rockets, all types of stuff. The, uh, uh, the Nazis was way ahead of uh, uh, the, uh, what you call it? Well, well, now I'm coming back to Daniel. And now, now Yahweh said, okay, I'm going to send you to Babylon, but I'm going to make your wisdom just, as a matter of fact, it's going to be ten times what? Greater than the, the wise men of Babylon. So in other words, you're going to be the cream of the what? Cream of the cream. And Yahweh always set that stuff up. Okay, now would you please read there the last, uh, uh, uh. so what my point was, is that I haven't forgot about my point of continuity of thought. The continuity of thought was, now if you have a vision, uh, you shouldn't be slackers. And you, and you shouldn't be in a state of, of confusion. Now listen, uh, you're always going to have fools walking around. You know when you're in class, you got somebody that's pulling salad hair, throwing spitballs and giant hair and somebody, well that's foolishness. Now if you want to wallow that, let him go ahead and wallow that because he's going to find out the clock is on him. Say, so, okay now, would you please read? Daniel 1 and 21. Go ahead. 20. 20. Go ahead. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times no, better. Some, and some matters of wisdom. Oh. Now, that, that, that's, that's a deep statement. Now listen, wait a minute. Oh, 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 wake up. Deep people were what you call, uh, 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 uh. they were up in Canaan's land here. See, uh, uh, being taught by priests, but but begin, but not uh, uh, not having the uh, 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 the, the carnal wisdom that Babylon had, uh, 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 and they, their institutions. You remember they got the MITs and Harvards and et cetera, et cetera there. But see, when they, when they were stacked up side by side, these people the, these people came out on top. So Yahweh made His wisdom cream to cream, and even the devil had to do it enough sense to bow to it. See, I said, the devil's got enough sense to bow to wisdom and knowledge. You, you, you look at the cases of uh, Joseph and what? Back in Egypt. When he interpreted, he said, listen, you, you wise man, listen here. I ain't no fool. The devil. Now, the Messiah himself said, he said, be as wise as a servant. But as, now, he didn't say be as dumb as the devil, because the devil ain't dumb. You may be dumb, but the devil ain't. <laughs> See, Lucifer was a very wise angel. See, very conceited, but he's very, very, very wise. Okay, so then, the, uh, uh, read that and finish that. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in, that were in all his realm. Wait a minute. Ten times in all his realm. Remember, Babylon was a vast empire, just as great as America today. Just stood out. See? It'd be like you walking into the president's uh, 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 every Monday, uh, every week you have, uh, uh, they have a National Security Council. Who's the National Security Council? That's the President, Vice President, Condoleezza Rice. There's about four people there. And they give the President point by point what's happening anywhere in the world. This is what we got. Status-wise. Okay, now, now the only way you can exceed that is through the power of what? Of Yahweh, because all they got is that mechanic stuff up there. The little satellites, the little, the little people running around. But when you direct it, direct it into the spirit, you have great power. And the word Israel means what? Having power with El. So now here's Yahweh making the principle of power being manifested here in, uh, um, here in uh, 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 Babylon. So Babylon has to bow to it. See? And, and it's being repeated down here with the vision here of Dr. Henry C. Kenman showing for, we're talking about mystery what? Babylon. So don't unchange. The principles of your work would do the what? Stay the same, but they repeat themselves. So you have you have to have a wisdom down here that's gonna supersede. Now, I want you to get me Revelations 18 and 3. And then uh, uh how many minutes I get I got? I want you know, just tell me approximately. Uh, 35 minutes. Okay, I'll do this real quick. Uh, I'll stick with the 70, uh, uh, the 70 weeks and uh, we'll do it this way. Uh, 
Now you had, uh, before, let, let me give you an overview of where I'm going. Lay out a premise. Uh, you had, uh, in this age, and in fact in your textbook, I think you give me volume four. Where is that charge located? Volume four, I used to know that stuff, volume four. You, you have, anytime you have four 490 cycles, uh, uh, that's already laid out. I'm, I'm not gonna repeat anything here. And what you do, if you if, listen, if you, if, you, if what you if this is what you hear for the first time, you should buy you some tapes, go home, and spend some time and cut off the idiot tube. You know, and uh, uh, you know, you know, you get some study sessions going, because you know why most Americans are dumb. Our biggest problem in America, like I tell a Jamaican, I said we got too many distractions. Right. People sit there and watch that TV every day, day in and day out. They can't do no work. And we're wondering why America is, you know, we're the 15th in the industrial civilization. I mean, before the industrial coming, people can't find a rock on the map. You can't find a rock on the map. Boy, boy, see, see, that's being deliberately what? Being what? Dumbed down. Now remember, the master, the master came in. And that was the claim he laid to war to you lawyers. Now, who were the lawyers? The lawyers were the priests. Remember, the priests had total monopoly on everything. They were the lawyers. They were the teachers. Oh, did you know they made the money in the temple? They, they literally made the little money in the temple. It was made. Now, it's what this paper mess that we have. They didn't play that. See, they used shackle. It was called the shackle of the tabernacle. See, uh, that shackle was of just like a dollar. It had a specific way. They get into that. But they had to lay that money had to be correctly balanced. Again, priests had everything. They were teachers. They were lawyers. Uh, and on top of that, they had this what? See, they had the tabernacle, and they had the inner secrets of this tabernacle. So they had a, a, a secret combine there by having all monopoly on these pieces. Well, what's, what's in the tabernacle? Well, the priest, Joe, the priest, he know what's up. What's going on, man? Oh, you know, you got to get these, you know, uh, I know what's up here. <coughs> See, now you may imagine, because you never what? Saw these vessels, and when you saw them, they were covered up. So you begin to understand the, 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 the and the Messiah said, war unto you, priest. You have taken away the what? See, if people like to take away the key to knowledge. And once you take away the key to knowledge, then you, you're taking away uh, your uh, uh, development of soul, your freedom, under this uh, new covenant. But I'm going to move, move real quick. Okay, so what's, did you find out what page that was on? It's page 46 of uh, volume 4. Well, like everybody go home and read it. See, and it talks about these four cycles. Now remember, as I said before, I got up here initially, that uh, th this is, there are many things that Dr. Kennedy stood out on. Uh, uh, and this was a fun one. I came from many, uh, I came from a family that was, had a lot of ministers in it, they were highly educated. And couldn't nobody explain those cycles. I knew about them, but when I saw them lined up, I knew the man had to have a vision. See, no doubt about it. So now, anytime you have four times 490. If you have 40 cycles, we come up with 19 what? 60. Now, in this age, I don't know whether you knew it or not, you had three manifestations of 1960 in this age. I'm talking about since AD 33. On the, you know, it's a four-year era of the calendars, and you know, if you look at some, uh, uh, some books, you know, commentaries, they would say that's uh, Messiah was crucified in AD what? 29. You know, you can, you can listen. This here ain't no slough off school. Not supposed to be. I told you that it was supposed to be 10 times. Now, if you ain't 10 times, if you can't come up with the mark, it's something wrong. It's not, with, it's not with the Holy Spirit. It's that, that you haven't made an effort to try to understand this thing. Okay. So now, uh, uh, so then you had 70 weeks of this. And anytime you get four of these, you get an N. Uh, of an age, or a world, or uh, as you say that, somebody got a dollar bill, I need a dollar bill, <laughs> <laughs> just to borrow, because what you have on there, or what you have on here, now the people that run this outfit, they left their symbol on here, say, so annoyed corpses, but I want to deal with a novus ordum seclorum. So, now, who put this on here? Very interesting guy. Uh, Roosevelt, Henry Thomas with algae culture. 
He was part of the secret societies, the Illuminati and the Masons and all that foolishness. See what I'm saying? Playing, you know, pretending to be uh, having the keys of knowledge, pretending and half the stuff is wrong and mixed up. Well, we wise. Say it. Now, uh, on your dollar bill, it, it says Nuvos. Uh, 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 Ordo Cyclone. I got to do this real quick. C S C S S E S E C L R U M. What that means is New New World Order. New World Order. A new order of the ages. See, now listen. The devil is a, a copycat. He is a copycat. He, why do you think he has four universal kingdoms? Why do you think he has four of them? Why couldn't it be seven? Why couldn't it be six or twelve? He picked four. Well, why is it there? Because in the fourth chapter of Revelation, around the throne of Elohim, how many beasts was it? He said, no, 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 I gotta get this thing straight. And your Federal Reserve System, how many districts do you have? Twelve. There are twelve districts. So they're going about pattern. See? Now, uh, 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 uh. so you got this new order of the ages. But see, did nobody know how these ages were ordered according to divine calculations? That's why I said, did they, they, they put this stuff on it? That's Latin. See? But they don't understand. That's the devil trying to get deep. See? and lacking a full understanding. But he does know that these ages have to come in, and he realizes that he has to set up his order too. He said, I gotta have a new order, because uh, now I don't know whether you know it or not. Astronomically, you know, the sun, we get ready to go into what we call the age of what? Aquarius. That's it's about 2010, somewhere around in there. And the devil said, listen, I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta get my house in order. We gotta get these nations together. We gotta bring out a whole new order. Uh, uh, we gotta get a new world religion. He's trying to emulate what? Yahshua Messiah in his new order or his official priesthood. That's what he's doing. Okay, now I'll make this thing real quick. I said that there was three, uh, three 1960s. Okay, you had, Dr. Kennedy told you that 1960 what? A.D. Now, if you had the old black textbook, you get a copy of the old black textbook, the God, the Octite pattern, well, if you don't, if you get a copy from somebody, somebody got it using Xerox, what he has, he has all the cycles laid out. You can see four of them. Oh, that's the, that, that was the original version. Okay, so 1960, this was an end. Okay, this is one manifestation. Okay, if you take AD, there's two, let's see, do it this way. If you take, uh, 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 just take uh, 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 1989 AD. Okay, you add what? Four year error? Right. You get 19 what? 93 and subtract what? 33. You get what? Now this is 1960 of the age. This is 1960 years from what? Of, from Pentecost. This is AD 33. Uh, uh, AD 33. Then your third manifestation of that would be just taking AD 33, AD 33, and then 1960, you get 19 what? 1993 on our calendar. So you have three manifestations of this, and each time, each time one of these things comes up, you look for something radically to change. 1989 uh, was a year that I knew something terrifically had happened. I thought it was be a whole lot. It wasn't what I expected. But what we had was the, the fall of one of the greatest empires in the world. The Russian Kremlin fell without a bullet. See, so the whole Russian Kremlin failed. You know, you know. I knew that it had to be, uh, this is 1989, 1990. I knew there had to be a great war somewhere. Somebody got to start, start a war. That was, during that 1989, 1990, you had what? That was Gulf War One. See, so, now we get ready with Gulf War Two. See, so, uh, Bush Jr., you know, he comes out of Yale University. What is Yale? Skull and Bones. Secret Society. See? So you had three presidents with Skull and Bones. Taft, Bush, uh, what? Bush Sr. and Bush Jr. You know, their little secret wisdom, you know, their whole new order. 
uh, and their foolishness. But the, uh, my point was, is that any time you, 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 you had these 1960s, you, know, you realize when this came, you had the civil rights movement, you had, you, you had the whole change in cultural. You had great upheaval that took place in the 1960s. See? So you begin to look at these cycles and say, wait a minute, every time you come up on these things, you begin to understand what you're looking at. And then in 1993 uh, uh, AD, uh, you had uh, uh, domestic terrorists that begin to what, what? Begin to take off. <coughs> See? Now, I said this to show forth how you have four of those. Now, in your textbook, you start from 1995. What do you mean? I mean, uh, uh, the year 1995 from the, uh, from the Messiah's birth. Uh, uh, and what happens, you get uh, uh, down to 1490, you get 505 years, but you've got to subtract out what? 15 years for who? Ishmael. So then, that's your first one. Your second one is uh, from the dedication of the temple. See? Now, each time you get these four nights, you get a new order. Something, there's, something's radically changed. See, so you get the, the, uh, 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 this tabernacle is dedicated. How was it dedicated? The cloud filled this tabernacle. So uh, 1490 to uh, uh, the year 1000, uh, that's a 490 year. That's a 70 week cycle. See, and the cloud came down and filled that tabernacle. But you had a brand new priesthood. The priesthood radically changed, folks, because listen, I mean, David came in and changed the priesthood. You can, he made it 24 courses. See, he, made a, he brought in a musician. In other words, we're moving on up. See? See? And when you read this, he, what he's doing is trying to emulate the priesthood that's in heaven. The whole course, the whole reign. Remember, I had a, uh, an angel appear to me in, in this dream one day, and he showed me this harp, this thing. And I asked him, I said, well, he said, play it. I said, I don't know how to play it. He said, uh, he says, it's done with the mind. You have to open the mind up and let the spirit flow through you. See, because I'm trying to, as you think you need to learn something, physically, and set out, sometimes the spirit will open up. And see, the secular world, they use the word, you know, they, everybody, everybody double speaks down here. What I mean, everything is deliberately here. People are trying to uh, secularize spirit, or, or, or make a total separation from you recognizing spirit. That's the reason why they teach evolution in school. They're weakening the faith. Even the Christians know that. Everybody, people say, you know, I don't believe in God. I believe in evolution. I say, well, you mean you believe in a creation uh, that took place spontaneously without any, 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 anything, continue to run? And you believe that. And I'm going to ask you a question. Well, do you think Ford could build a car like that? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And maintain it? So my point is that you begin to understand this. Okay, they use the word called intuition. Give me a dictionary. What is intuition? They don't want to use the Holy Spirit. They don't say Holy Spirit. You, you go into a college, you tell somebody you got a revelation from the Holy Spirit in your physics class, you're likely to get mocked out of there. <laughs> See, which truly, that is, that is the truth. Yeah. But the folks have been so dumbed down by mind control, that is politically incorrect. Right, right. See, you got to understand what mind control is out of here. Now, what, they, they would say, well, we use the word intuition. Do you have a dictionary there? The act or faculty of knowing without the use of rational processes. Oh, wait a minute. That ain't got deep. Some words, in other words, how do you know something without remember? Uh, that's another lecture to itself. When you look at the mind, uh, uh, I ain't talking about your brain now. I'm talking about the, the mind that you got, that, that, that consciousness that you will carry apart from the body after you discard that. That mind, one of the things, why don't you give me the definition of mind real quick. Now, one of the things you have in there is intellect. You have reasoning. You have perception. Listen, folks. These are principles that are already pre-programmed. That's why I say Elohim is the master programmer. In case you got to step back. And there ain't no beta testing on this either. See? See, when I mean beta testing, you ain't got to keep trying to figure out how this thing going to work out. See? So you got all these principles laid down. So you got reasoning. Now, you only give it a limited amount. See? So then, how do you know something without you consciously thinking about it? So then there has to be another source that interacts with this consciousness that's above and beyond this limited intellect. Am I right? That's the Holy Spirit. I said, well, then I had a direct knowing. It's just like the guy that, that, that invented the laser. Did you tell me you don't hear a problem? The laser that runs everything. 
It runs your Xerox machine. It runs your CD. It just runs everything and lays as a principle of light application. He had a dream. He had a dream. I think that's almost a new covenant. To match the light. And, and it, all of the information is coming through fiber. It's coming to the ground. We have a lot of engineers in that class. Everything is being moved by light through these toes. Light has become the transportation of information. But why is that? See, you don't understand what's taking place. You are in an age. And see, here's the light of the world. So now as he's increasing man's knowledge, what? Naturally, exponentially, you know, knowledge is doubling every three years. Every five, that's natural knowledge. Boom, 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 boom. If you're in a certain field of mechanical engineering or uh, a program and you you out of the field for four or five years, they say, listen, you're behind, man. You're way behind. Just knowledge is just moving. Now that's naturally. But it's got to be even what? More so in the spirit. See? But see, a lot of us say we close our mind and stuff. Well, you go ahead and close your mind. You'll be, you'll be like the guy that walked on the drive the, the, the T mile forward down, down, down the highway here. <laughs> oh, you know it was hundred years, it was a hundred years since uh, the right brothers was fried next year. <laughs> now, how would you like to ride by a couple of foot, or, you know, driving around in one of the right brothers planes and you got a 767? Who are you gonna choose? <laughs> so you can begin to understand the principles in which we all have to do is open up. Okay, now uh, read that please. Would you please reread? My. The human consciousness that originates in the brain and is manifested especially... Hold it. I got a problem there. Big problem. Error. Incorrect. But if, you, if you're in the MIT Institute, you better go along with the, the past text. Consciousness in the brain. You say anything else, you're going fail. <laughs> See? Now, what my part about somebody gave me the 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. Paul said, I knew a man in the body, out of the body. He was listening to the third what? Well then, if he said he would, he, then, when, how could he have consciousness if it's, if it's maintained solely where? In this physically what? White cloud. So consciousness can exist apart from the body. This is just a physical manifestation of it to interact or work with that or interface with that. But this is what they teach in materialism. That's what they say. We talk about the, the philosophy of materialism, which America has been immersed or based in. Okay, how many minutes I got? Five? Okay, got to do it. Just about closing up. But my point was, continually, is that through the vision uh, of Dr. Kennedy, of the given by Yahweh Elohim, it should make you ten times better. And when I say ten times, I mean uh, psychologically, morally, spiritually. Because see, uh, remember, uh, after they interpret the, uh, uh, after they interpret and done things to. Uh, Daniel, uh, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar saw that these people was ten times better. He said, listen, uh, uh, I'm not going to have y'all wait on tables. I'm going to give you a whole province to rule. In other words, they were giving a little whole province of life to a state. He said, listen, uh, Shadrach, you, you boys, y'all can have a whole state to go. You ain't got to answer to nobody but me. Because I know you can run that thing, what, straight. Because you got wisdom that's ten times better than my boys over here as a bunch of bureaucrats. See, they don't have that type of wisdom. See, so you shouldn't be slack. People say, well, I know this, and I can't do this on my job. I said, what do you think Yahweh is for? Or, see, Yahweh says, I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed where? So and that means that anything that you confront, you, you're supposed to have, you have having power with that. Where's the power at? And it should be manifest where people, if they would see you asking them, say, say, man, where you learn this at? Or how do you act like that? Let me go on down and check out what you're doing. Because you seem to be manifesting principles that I just I see people talk about, but yet came before do what? Manifest. Okay, would you please uh, now go back to the director. So, uh, 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, uh, 1. It is not agreeable to God that any should perish, but uh, it's not it was, it was, it was, is it uh, is it Second Corinthians twelve? I, was, I knew a man. Uh, Jump the second verse. Corinthians twelve two. I knew a man in the Messiah about fourteen years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. Yahweh knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Okay, so he was caught up to the third heaven. See, he said, now, I don't know whether I was in a body or out of the body, but we know by the pattern that he couldn't be where. In a body. Because mm -hmm. you made a body, soul, and spirit. So the body was laid aside just like Moses when he was elevated in his spirit. See, his body was laid down. 
If you call it for consciousness, it's not a part of the physical body, even though it has its reflex. See? Okay, so uh, 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 read a little bit more of that. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I can not tell Yahweh knoweth. Go ahead. How, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words. Wait a minute, he heard, heard, heard. Heard is a what? Heard. It is, a, it is actually part of what? It's part of consciousness because he's got a perception. Even though he ain't got no ears there, he's able to perceive. So then we just, even though now we don't, we don't verify the dictionary here, it's all, you know, again, we're dealing with people of, I call them asthma intelligence. Now you talk about their behind, they stubborn hearted, very hard headed, and they own dogma. It's a dog of Mr. Babylon trying to strip science from its what? Source of spirit. See, and try to analyze that without the source of spirit, and even though they get uh, wonderful devices, they still ain't come up to the level that they are. Okay, now go back to uh, intuition. Uh, uh, and mind, yeah, and then I'll be finished up on that. Mind. The human consciousness that originates in the brain and is manifested especially in thought, perception, feeling, will, memory, or imagination. Oh, so you've got will in here? You know, I will to go to show I will to do this, I will to do this. Why do you do that? You a miniature Elohim. Miniature, but limited. it. See? So all of those properties are laid down within that, and you got a whole, I don't want to get into that, that's a whole conditioning process. Those of you that took psychology, you took, uh, you know, uh, Peg L and uh, uh, a whole child, how these things are developed through certain types of interaction uh, uh, and perfected. See, but my point was, getting back to intuition, remember the NFL. And then give me uh, Jeremiah 31, but Yahweh said, Yahweh said, I will write the new law in their what? See, so you, get, you got a master program. See, so that's sitting back there, just program. And I ain't talking about like Gates up there, out there and, and, and Washington. See, that's totally the, 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 the program that he does. I'm talking about the DNA that's in the plants. I'm talking about all form of, uh, of life. They're already programmed. See? You know, when you come out when a child is three years old, if it's in Russian, it's in French, a child has the ability to pick up on a language. You try to you take Russian. Russian is probably one of the hardest languages to do. I was in college, he said, you taking Russian? He said, no, man. He said, why not? I said, you got to learn a whole new damn alphabet. <laughs> I'm trying to get through the 26. You got to literally know a whole alphabet. See? And it's a very difficult language to learn. But as a child, the way that Yahweh has uh, set this brain up, a child learns it very quickly. All the syntax, all the stuff just like that. Who's programming that? Who's doing that? And you know, that's natural. That's physical. And you've got to translate it all what? Psychologically into the mind and understand the power of the new covenant. Into the transformation of the mind. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about this new age and it makes you a priest. Let me finish this. I want you to give me uh, uh, 1 and 7. Revelation 1, 1, 4 and 5. And then I'll quote Hebrews, the seventh chapter, where Yahweh said that, that he could find perfection in the priesthood of the Levitical priesthood. So he done away with that priesthood and established a new priesthood after the order of male what? Now, wait a minute. Something happened here. The principle is, when you look at, under the new covenant, power was decentralized. See, under the old covenant, it was all what? Centralized into the priest. See? Say, Yahweh said, no, no, we ain't going to do it that way. That's what you have with the major corporation. They said, listen, we don't want all the power located in headquarters. You can't make a decision. you got to call me. Should I buy the paper balls? The hell are you talking about buying something? Listen, just buy it. Don't get any time to be bothered with that. So you got to decentralize it. Yahweh said, listen, I'm going to make everybody a priest. After order what? Now, then you don't need no mediator. You, you ain't got to ask Joe. Did you, did you see the flash in the shack out right there, man? No, because I'm going to reveal it where? Within your heart and mind. Nobody got an excuse here. So, so I want to end up there. So that's what this new covenant is. Now listen, the devil is trying to mimic this same process. See, as we told you, the law is written in your heart and mind. Now, with, with this new priesthood that we're supposed to have, then we're supposed to shine. And I want to end up with Daniel that the, uh, uh, the stars shall run to and what? To and fro. And those stars ain't talking about Alpha and Shira and, and then It's talking about those sons of El. See, that have the that have been programmed. See, by Yahweh. So now there's people that got problems with the program. 
You know, you, you, you ever have a, pro, uh, you got a, a, a hard drive, and, 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 and it becomes fractured, the program is all messed up, the program is corrupted. No problem. You got to erase that program and reinstall them, reinstall Windows. See the point? Windows. See, them veils got to be opened up. See? See, so you begin to understand what has to take place here, and you look, you look at the nat natural manifestation that you see uh, manifested in man's so-called science. Okay. Uh, give me those two scriptures and I'll be finished. Revelation 1 and 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Excuse me, let me get down to one eight. It's supposed to be one eight nine. It's six then, okay, it's six. Six. And hath made us kings and priests unto Elohim and his father. Hath made us what? Kings and priests. So you so everybody's a king and priest. That's why he's king of king, but everybody's a king and priest. See? So then what that means in closing, folks, do you know what sovereign power is? Sovereignty, look at the definition of sovereignty up. That's where I want to end up at. See now, there's only been one document on the face of this earth since Pentecost that's able to exemplify the new covenant. That's, that's the American Constitution. See the, see, the situation, the way it's set up, the way the found, even though they were slave owners, they had enough sense to, uh, to put forth, you always put it in their heart, master programmer. Put it in their heart and mind. He says, power <clears throat> by the people for the people of the people by the people in, in other words in other words the government don't have the power the big power lies with what it, it has to be because it's going by the new covenant see see but now they want to ask the thing back up with my you know with the, with the patriot act they want to put all the power and give it all what back to the first no 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 wait, wait, wait. we can play that game that's played one time in heaven. No, uh, no, no, no. The power lies in the people. See, now Yahweh gave the sons what? What power? So give me the word sovereignty up. Sovereignty. Supremacy of authority or rule. Okay, now, now the Messiah said some power was given to him. Oh. So that all power was given to Yahshua when he resurrected. Now that power was given to his what? His kings and what? Priests. Or his apostles as they went out. All power was given to them. And they demonstrated that power in wisdom and miracles. Now listen, it don't stop there, folks. See, now let me say in closing, it's less than that, like Penny was saying, one of the, we heard one of the, somebody in one of the classes, uh, somebody said, the man's on crack, on crack! Now he's supposed to have all power. All power! Now you, you, now you, you sniffing crack. Now who got the power? You a crack. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Wait a minute, how you succumb to something like this when you were given all power? So that means that there was something wrong with the program here. See, not, not with Yahweh's program, but with your pro program. So, and folks, let me say this. Uh, we've been made kings and priests. And you know, shoddy, if you don't know what a king or a priest is, you look at Queen Elizabeth and her coronation. When she comes out in all her reign, you see that gold and stuff, that stuff stands out. Now, that gets physically, naturally. Now, what we're talking about. I want to end up with Galatians 5.22, the fruits of the Spirit. That's how you close. And with the, even the devil got enough sense to know you got to have trust. He knows you got to have integrity. You ain't stealing from me. Even the, even the mafia don't want people stealing from them. And, and you know that's a corrupt organization. Say, listen, you, listen we, we, you know, we don't want you going with somebody else's wife over here either. See? So you know, what I'm trying to get you to see then, listen, we're supposed to be examples. I mean, not when I say example, I mean cream of the cream. And if you're not manifesting those things, you in key what? Big trouble, because the Holy Spirit is not in power. See? And uh, what did I want? Galatians 5.22. And that's why I want to end up. Thank you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is such, against such there is no law. Let me say in closing, folks. Now, as we told you that new order of the ages, well, here's the new order. Now, if you're manifesting those principles, you, you have a new order. And you're walking straight, and don't think ain't nobody watching you. See? See, they're pushing 
Ain't nothing wrong with lesbians. Nothing with gay. They're pushing all types of perversions to people now. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't walking straight uh, with this program and with this power, you will be overcome. I want to thank you very much.